welcome to the Interest Day Podcast, episode number 99. 99, goodness. That is farther than I think I ever thought I'd get, but we did it. We're here. And this episode is Nathan Hamill. He is a writer, he's a creator, he is an artist. He's awesome. We, uh, we talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk about him growing up, going to San Diego Comic-Con, inspiration for his art, designing his own toy, which is a fascinating process, what goes into making uh, vinyl figures. Uh, he's the creator of Lava Bear, which is awesome. Check it out. It's really, really cool, really unique. I love Nathan's style. Uh, he's one of the creators of Two Dumb Dinos, which is a hilarious comic strip. Cannot recommend it enough. Check it out. Uh, actually, if you go to Cameo.com, Scumbag, one of the dinos, he does Cameo. So you can uh, get get messages from him and, uh, you know, have a little fun with it. Scumbag's hilarious. Uh, we talk about Weasel Town, which is a cartoon that he worked on years ago that I saw years ago. And I just put two and two together on this show that Nathan worked on it. So that was pretty neat. Also, today, as of today, there's a new design that you can check out at NathanHamill.Threadless.com. I'm not going to tell you what it is because he drops that at the end of this episode. It's amazing. It's really, really cool. Check it out. So... Without further ado, let's get right into it, friends. Please enjoy the interesting podcast episode number 99 with Nathan Hamill. Theme song time. started listening to one today called you're wrong about ellipsis Ooh, uh that's amazing where they, they debunk <laughs> stuff and you know once again it's a i forgot where that's the thing i forgot where i heard it but it was a referral from another podcast and one of my favorite shows um is uh we hate movies and Ooh, um nice. and i heard of them because they were doing Podfest. i heard of them from um comedy film nerds which they're unfortunately they're they're ending. I think I think it's next December. It might be this December. I think it's next December. They gave people a heads up so you can enjoy the last year and change. But um, Man. they're just uh, they've done ten years and they're you wow. Know, time ten, to move on. But ten years uh, That's that a long. lot of work. Yeah. Whew. I just hit four. And I'm okay. Like, okay. It's been a while. It's been a while. But ten. Yeah. <laughs> Whoo. Getting yeah. on it. It's so funny that internet radio is making a comeback. Of all right. of all the things that could be like the new medium that people are really diving into, internet radio. Well, but it's so interesting though because if what, what year is it again? Yeah, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, uh, we <laughs> we if you started ten years ago, two thousand nine. I think the first podcast I actually listened ever listened to was two thousand five. Was the Ricky Gervais show? Right. And uh, I mean that one. That one was big. That was I think the Guinness Book record holder for a while there. Um, put, you know, they had, I think initially just six episodes, put those on going down to Comic-Con that year. And it, you know, it lasted me the whole, the whole trip driving down there. And that's kind of, uh, that's kind of what got me, you know, hooked on, on podcasts. But, um, it's so strange to think that, that like uh, with Twitter, I started, uh, 10 years ago, like in the summer of 2009 and it's 10 years is it's not a lot things have it feels like we've been living with it for almost forever forever now you know what i mean it's weird that 11 years ago i guess there was facebook and and uh, myspace and and friendster which i i missed out on (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. um might have dodged a bullet there (laughs) yeah right right but um but that was that's a different animal you know what i mean it's it's uh you're kind of it's a little more insular right where you're you're just Dealing with, dealing with, yeah. dealing with, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yep. But it's, it's, it's just, it's crazy to think it's only been this long or, or even, you know, I, I left my phone in a lift coming home one night Uh-oh. and it was right before Comic-Con and I, it was about two days where I didn't have it. You know, I'm emailing people sure. um, to, to, for content, but I realized there's so much I couldn't do 
And it's just it's crazy to think I was I was without for two days and I honestly didn't know what I was going to do if I if I went to Comic Con. It was like that Tuesday before I went down Wednesday or Thursday. I was like, I don't know how I used to function with yeah up with people. What would like a Comic Con? You sure. would just I, I think you would probably you'd have to you know bring a computer bring bring your laptop get. Find Wi-Fi. Yeah. Email <laughs> someone. Quest. Say, meet me here, and then keep you know just be like a little puppy by their by their heel and stay with them all night, or you're just your night is over. <laughs> you're yeah, not gonna for real. Them. So, um, it's so weird. What a weird time to be alive, huh? Yeah. And like the the age range as well. Like imagine, I always think about. So I was born in '91. So mm-hmm. like internet got kind of. I remember being like 10 years old or so. And you got like internet on these discs for like three hours of Netscape here that you get at the post office. Right. Yeah. And now like your phone, like you're saying, is literally everything. You have anything you could ever want on your phone. So it's in just a short amount of time as well. I like the phone now. It's telling you, um, at least on the, um, I don't know if it's an, an Apple or it's uh, an iPhone thing, but it'll tell you how much time you've spent. I'm not willing to release oh, that. Oh, no. <laughs> um, that's so but, um, <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, OK, so I'm doing it absentmindedly, I'm sure, you know, just uh, refreshing, you know, uh, going to Instagram and, you know, oh, yeah, I've got, I've, and I've got I've got the um, my personal one and uh, two dumb dinos, the comic strip. Yes, I do. Eric amazing. Filipowski. So I'm then jumping back and forth between those. Um, sure. So that's uh, a big time waster. So many but, things. I, I, I should cut down, but it's just, uh, you know, I guess there's worse things. So Yeah, of course. There's always heroin. Uh, then you've yeah. got... <laughs> well, I... that's another thing I want to talk to you about now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> that's for the in-between but... the apps. I get it. Yeah, I yeah, understand. yeah. <laughs> Slows down my uh, Instagram usage. So Exactly. It's... Yeah, you yeah. got to fill the time somehow. And you know what, Nathan? <laughs> I get it. I understand. Yeah. I'm here for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if I wasn't following so many cool things and people, you know, it'd be easier. But it's like, where else am I going to see 100 pictures of pugs? You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know that, where they are here. It's so. also so It's so funny. We, you know, we, uh, I mentioned uh, uh, Darina before we started um, uh, recording. And um, well, I know her. I met her in person through a friend. But uh, we, we will stop and, and we have this group of friends now that we realize that we try to you know, trace it back to where we met. And it'll be usually Twitter or a podcast where, oh, yeah. you know. I think it was, I heard Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis on um, some podcast and then started following and listening to them back when he did Far, Far Away, I think it was, before Jedi Council. Right. And I, I even wrote in a letter, it was before episode seven, and I, I, it was a legit, legitimate question about whether or not, we, what form of stormtroopers we would see. Right. And he read it on air, and then, you know, the next thing you know, we're uh, you know, hanging out at Comic Con—it's such a strange thing that you know, or, or or especially when you run into someone that you follow and you're not sure if you've met them in real life or not. Oh yes, I feel like you know them, but this is sort of an awkward. Uh, oh a yes, strange new world. So. Been there before. It's like, hey, yeah. you know me. Uh oh. Okay, let's. Uh, yeah. What do you know? That way I can talk. <laughs> well, and then it also can be like I think when I fir- I followed Joseph Scrimshaw and his wife Sarah. Mm-hmm. And so I recognized them together. So that was confirmation. And I, you know, I followed them, but I had never met them. They're at the um, the uh, the Marriott down once again at Comic Con. That'll probably come up a lot. Sure. And uh, I'm like, you know, um, hey Joseph, and you know, he had the, this lo- little hesitation. You know, what 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 am I getting into here? Who is this person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a d- incoming threat, just in case. You're like, okay, hold on. Yeah. Wait. My name was said somewhere. Yeah, I was dressed like uh, John Travolta in The Fanatic, too, so that probably didn't That's help. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so I've never been to Comic-Con. Okay. Uh, what is it like? Because you've been going for a while, I'm assuming. Yeah, um, I went as a kid. Um, with, my dad would take me, and sure. not not every year, but I remember going in the early 80s. Um, oh, wow. Getting... Sergio Aragones uh, drawing Alfred E. Newman on a oh, Mad cool. Magazine uh, issue for me, which mysteriously mm-hmm. has disappeared. I, I, have, uh, I have theories that you know maybe uh, someone uh, someone took it for themselves. Um, so mm. I'll, have to, I'll have to check my dad's attic. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just 
just in case. But, yeah, if I'm my uh, twin brother, who's a Hugo, who's, you know, yeah, changed. that's right. Um, <laughs> but, um, so we, you know, we'd go when I was, you know, uh, a lot younger, and uh, I think I, one year I, I, I remember being kind of like, still early on where it was manageable or wasn't such a, a scene sure. was 89, the summer of 89 when Batman came out. Ooh, yeah. nice. They had, they had uh, just Bob the Goon. They, all the Joker, really? Joker and, uh, and Batmans were all gone. Because I, I know they were ready for that movie. It wasn't like with Star Wars figures where they weren't anticipating the, the demand. Sure. But you, they still couldn't, they still couldn't fill that, uh, fill that demand. I mean, you could get Bob the Goon, but with, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's what everyone Batman. wants, you know, <laughs> according to but the then, stock. <laughs> but then I think, like, after that and in high school, I didn't go until I started working for um, Bongo Comics, which um, uh, is Matt Groening's company. His oh, cool. publishing company does comic books, um, uh, calendars, episode guides for The Simpsons. Um, and I... Uh, I interned there for a little bit and then became a colorist, did some writing, um, did production work. Um, so we would go down there. We had a booth. And uh, so I went from 2002 until 2013. Uh, that was my longest streak. And I missed 2014 because they were shooting uh, this little space movie in England uh, yeah. <laughs> at seven. So, yeah, I thought, you know what? I, th I think it's a fair trade. I think I'm going to miss this year. And um Good trade. Uh, Good trade. Yeah, and go up, go <laughs> that. Um, go fuck yourself, San Diego. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, you can you can believe that. I don't know if you can swear here. Oh, you're good. <laughs> uh, but um, so I missed that one year. But I, yeah, I've been going. Uh, I, th I don't think I've missed a year since 2014, and it's. Um, I mean it. It it had cha it changed so much even from like 2000. Two to two thousand four. Really? Um, there, there was they they printed some pamphlet. Um, they or it was some Comic Con um, uh, giveaway the book, book they had there that they mm -hmm. put in your bags. You know when you you walk in, sure, all the cash keys and stuff. Um, and they they had a list of all the attendants, uh, the number of people that were there for each year going back to I don't know. I guess it was like nineteen sixty nine or seventy when it started. Um, and around that time, to, like between 2002 and 2004, it almost doubled in in capacity. I mean, wow. in attendance, you know, 60 to my numbers are probably off. It really we went from like 60 to 90, and that's still small compared to to now. But sure. um, but yeah, it's um, it's 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 a lot of fun. I'll, I'll, I'll you know uh, I've been releasing um, vinyl toys there for about yeah 10 years now um i don't so know if i would cool. um so so that's it's it, it's kind of vacation it's kind of work um you know because i'm essentially working an hour right. doing something. and the rest of it is just hang out with friends you know um yes yeah, so seeing people you don't see all year until you know until you run into them uh, at comic-con so right um, but it's uh yeah it's 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 a good time uh, that and uh, designer con those are the big ones every year for me that's in Anaheim every uh, uh or actually it'll be the second year in um in Anaheim uh, in November so anyone listening come out to that I have uh, a few things uh few things to release yeah that's got to be exciting to like grow up yeah. going to cons and being into that type of things and then making those things later on that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's um. Remember, there was a guy who had a uh, a t shirt, um, back when you know, back in the early '80s, that simply said, "My mom threw them away." <laughs> didn't matter what. You didn't need to know what he collected. That's right. You People just walk knew. Past having these knowing, mournful <laughs> looks. You know, I, I, I feel you. Yeah. You know? That's right. I I get it. I, it's just hugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Support group. That's amazing. So what what kind of stuff were you into as a kid? Was it like was did you have a favorite superhero? Um, I liked Wolverine. Good um, one. But I think that came a little later. I think my dad was more of a DC fan, so that obviously um, sure was. Uh, so I I, for, I really liked the Flash and Doctor Fate, who I Ooh, don't start good ones. around too much. But um, and then other than that, it was I I'm still not really that much of a superhero uh, person. Um, uh, I, you know, I'll go see the, the 
go go see the 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 movies and stuff but yeah, of course um i would probably lean towards the bigger thing was probably um carl barks the uh Ooh, the nice. bridge mcduck and all those stories yeah that's cool so when did you start drawing you had to have done it as a kid because you're really um good. yeah i I actually, you know, speaking of my mother, my mom threw them away, that shirt. I was lucky. My mom didn't, she kind of, I think being married to a, a collector, she kind of knew, you know, sure. that was forbidden or, or yeah. frowned upon. <laughs> um, no, but um, so I, I actually have a lot of uh, drawings that I, I, I'm i guessing are 1985 and on. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have some of them up on my um, uh in my gallery on my website oh, under, cool. under miscellaneous it's so it would be ghostbusters um beautiful a lot of ghostbusters where i would even be writing out the the dialogue from scenes oh cool uh, a lot of ghostbusters some star wars little shop of horrors um <laughs> dude that sort of thing then you know then some lobo and wolverine you know getting you know later on um getting into getting a little more into that stuff but um yeah, so it, it, it goes uh goes back a, a, a little bit. Not bad, not bad. Was it something you did, like, whenever I talk to artists, I'm always curious, like, did, is it something that you, like, inherently did and then you doodled all the time and then got better and better? Or you took classes for it or? Um, well, I guess the classes, yeah, I mean, back then I, I, you just had art class, right, when you were. Sure. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I would... I, I, th- I think I think then later in high school is kind of when it became something that you um, elected to do. Sure. Um, Actually pursued type thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, no, it's just that, yeah, it's something I've always uh, in, in, in gravitated towards. So, um, and then with the whole toy thing, it just kind of, kind of, like I said, it was about, you know, 10 years ago, it released uh, Boris uh, the Raccoon, which is yes. a... Yes. A half inch uh, purple raccoon, purple guy, um, who I later realized I'm, I think that was subconsciously um, inspired by the Care Bear cousins who had a purple Ooh, raccoon. Ooh, good one. So yeah, um, a little bit of that. A little uh, people said it's got a little uh, Sonic the Hedgehog um, influence. I can see it. See, yeah. So, um, but that kind of was a, just a nice, happy accident, a nice marriage of well, I draw and. I also, you know, I, I still collect toys, so yeah, you know, as well put these two together, and and you know, also running out of room with sure. <laughs> where every surface has got some, you know, some little collectible because I, you know, I've got the I've got McDonald's Happy Meals to- Happy Meal toys from back in '86 or whatever. Yeah. So at a certain point, when you have to you slow down because of space and uh, uh. Started just kind of, kind of realizing, hey, you know what? I should, um, I should collect my own stuff. You know, it'll, it'll, uh, it won't be, um, won't be collecting as much as every freaking amiibo or whatever it might be. <laughs> yeah, you have a, an entire house made of pops. Um, I only, uh, I only have one that was a, um, a giveaway. They're doing one of my, um, of my dad as, as himself, not as a character. Oh, that's awesome. That um, is actually going to be at at um, DesignerCon. Um, yeah. Check out the DesignerCon um, Instagram, and I think I've posted it too. But um, yeah, it, they 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 made this deal, you know, behind the scenes. I wasn't. Um, it was between Funko and Ben Gretzky from Three D Retro kind of helped facilitate the whole thing, mm-hmm. and uh, Ben Stevens from Official, Official Picks. Um, and without me knowing, they just, they put, um, the, uh, lava bear, um, uh, I did oh, a t-shirt sweet. five years ago, a lava creep. Yeah. And, um, they put it on the toy and, you know, I, I like the fact that I didn't spearhead it. It was just like, Hey, is this cool? I'm like, yeah. Can I have some? <laughs> sure. There you go. Free so, toy. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Dude, um, that's cool. So yeah, that'll be, uh, it's kind of weird to have. Have a uh, have your uh, drawing on a uh, Funko because those um, Funko fans. I, I I knew that there was a, a, a like a you know a, a real rabid following sure uh, and fan base. But we went to the Funko um, Funko nights or a, it was a, a Friday night event in um, at Comic Con and it was thousands of people in this ballroom and I just felt like I was so 
so out of like I, I felt like a fish out of water just because or I was just wasn't I didn't know that it was it was they were they had such diehard fans right felt like I was at a, like a um WWE where I'm like I don't know yeah. why they're cheering <laughs> for that person I don't know what's going on but sure yeah you're just feeling it you're like they're excited cool me too let's what are we excited about <laughs> every time someone scores you're just cheering regardless of who <laughs> yeah been there that's great what so was Boris the first toy you made um yeah yeah that was yeah um 10 years ago uh, this last summer and um that was the first and then we and then I started working with uh, that was with a company called U1 Toy Arts and started working with 3D Retro um who the the Ben Gretzky the uh the owner is also the the guy who runs DesignerCon um right on and we've we've worked together I've worked with uh Currently, the last toy I released was called Drords. Uh, I did yeah. with Science, Festival, which is in um, uh, uh, Corey from uh, who's in Tokyo. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've um, done a few. Yeah, uh, I'd say so. Not not too bad. You got your own little collection. It's like Yondu yeah, and Guardians. Final, I've, done, I've done some resin and and um, metal pieces. Uh, though those just. It's uh, I, I'd still do another one, but I, especially the metal pieces, it's there. You know, it just gets a little. Uh, it's, it's kind of an expensive proposition, you know, to 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 uh, to get going and to sell. So I bet. So it's mostly been vinyl. When you're making these sort of toys and stuff, do you like taper the design toward the medium? Um. Well, there was obviously there were alterations and changes from Boris was. Uh, Boris was actually a um, raccoon design I did for um, what was going to be an animated show. This is like back in 2004 or five that I wanted to do with my friends that, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't know anyone. We didn't have, we sure. did, it was just this pipe dream we had and he was, so I had all these turnarounds of facial expressions and stuff and then did a, a um, posted on my, on my blogger back in the day. Beautiful. And then this guy, Patrick, who worked for um, UN Toy Arts, and I'd worked at um, I'd worked with him at a, uh, a toy store on the uh, Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica called um, uh, Toy Planet back when I was in high school. So he contacted me, and it was just they were looking for a design. Um, so yeah, I mean, to, yeah, to, to get back to your question, it was I think he's a little stouter, he's a little chubbier. The the original design, the kind of you know streamline it and. Uh, but what's what's funny is a lot of the, not a lot. There there definitely are like Bellicose Bunny. I was designing that with a toy in mind, but then for um, Strife and Sire, which is a little um, imp who's uh, standing on the skull of a fallen god. Yes. Um, so um, and it goes. It deals with Germanic lore. How there there be these little creatures that would protect you know protect the gods. Um, I might be a little fuzzy on those details. It's been a little while, but um, sure. but uh, uh, with that one, it was it, it was funny. It was Ben going through my sketchbook, and those characters were not on the same page. There was you know they were on uh, facing uh, or opposing pages, and he just went, "How about we put this guy and that guy?" That's how that happened. So it can really? be just the you know never never uh, it was never a character that was uh, designed with a toy in mind. So that's cool. Was it was your style something that like you like? I have a buddy of mine who does cartoons as well, and I can always tell when it's one of his, like, right? His, his sort of thing. Was that something that you sort of developed over time, or it came out of you? Like, because I yeah. I really like your style a lot. Like, I can tell your pieces as well. Like, like okay, like lava bears specific types. Boris, right? Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I I it's funny. I'm I'm not really a, a, I, I'm a, more of aware aware of it now, but yeah, it was in I don't know. Uh, you know, five, ten years ago, someone actually, a friend of mine said, oh, you can definitely, like, you have a style. You can definitely tell that this piece is yours or this piece is yours. And I, I kind of, I I just, I never even thought of it. It's a way we, like something that just, just happened. So um, it's also people will ask, you know, what's, is there, is there a shared universe? Is there, sure. is there a <laughs> thematic toy universe? No. Um, and that's another thing too. I'm like, well, the, the continuity is just, I guess, my just my brain. I don't know. You sure. know, I don't 
I'm just like, hey, yeah, if there's if it, if it works out, they all have their separate stories, but um, yeah, um, they they there could be there could be a crossover, but it's not necessarily about that building a world that it needs to be cohesive necessarily. Right. I think that's the best kind of art, the kind that just comes out and you're like, here. But yeah, well, that's the other thing too is, um, you know, sometimes I don't really. I think talking about art sometimes can take away from some of the the mystique that there that's there, or it for sure it should be more subjective to let let the the, the viewer um, kind of do their take on it, or maybe I'm just lazy and I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> A little from column A, a little from column B. That's fair. That's fair. It's a lot of work designing characters like that, especially original ones where you're not like imitating something as well, where you have something to go off of. Right, right, where it's not a parody or yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes Uh, total sense. Or something, yeah. Does it take you longer to design a character as far as like an art piece or as a toy? Um, well, the toy takes longer just because you, um. Like you, have to, you have to do a, 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 a 3D. You have to do a turnaround um, for the sculptor. Um, so that's how it works. I, I don't. I mean, I can. I do amateur sculpting when I would do um, custom toys using a sculpey to to add on to. Oh, cool. Um, onto an existing uh, platform sure. or, or existing toy. Um, but um, yeah, so you, I do. I'll do a turnaround of the character. Give it to the sculptor. He does it. Or now um, she, I worked with George Gaspar, now uh, Whitney Mitchell. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then you kind of just fine tune it because it's, you know, you you draw something in 2D. It's not, it's, you know, there, there's a transition there with, you know, um, turning it into a 3D piece. There's going to be, you know, some growing pains there. So you have to right. tuck it a little bit. But yeah, we just um, go back and forth and find, you know, it's it's not going to be the exact same thing once you bring it into the three D world. You know, unless you're unless you're sculpting it from scratch or you're doing it in ZBrush or something like that. Um, you know, there's there are I don't know so. I mean, yeah, I don't think it's going to be um, it's going to be a little loose. But I remember before I would, I'd ha- I would have a lot of characters that would kind of have more like almost like a i'm not comparing myself to but just like a like a picasso feel where like one eye it doesn't actually work in a 3d space but that's not the point that's right. you know it's it's pushing i mean take taking advantage of it being 2d and not 3d where it that might look stranger or not be as aesthetically um interesting or pleasing or whatever however whatever your your bag is so um sure yeah makes total sense it's so much work. I can't draw anything. So anyone who makes any sort of art, I'm like, you're a magician. It's incredible. <laughs> so then that's well, we all have that. Like you know, the the grass is always greener. Or I, like I'm in I'm in I I play a little bit of music, but people can who can you know write um you know write f- fully fleshed thoughts. I would you know I'd be in a band. I would come up with the music part, but not the melody and how, you know, it's all phrase and structure. That's so to me, that's sort of the, that's, that's the, uh, the, the, the math, that's magic to me. Um, sure. or, or stand up comedians being able oh, to for real, almost like a magic trick where you're, you know, you have people in a trance cause you're, if you're good at it, you're, you're, you're controlling, you're controlling someone's, I mean, this sounds more nefarious than it is, but you're kind of, you're in their head and sort of like taking them on, you know, this, uh, taking them on this little trip. And, um, absolutely. That always fascinates me. And it's, it's, and it's something I could never do. It's, it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm with you. I, I'm like, I'll, I'll kind of talk, to, you know, I'll like to, you know, entertain my friends or tell jokes, but that's when there's five people around not getting up and having to, that. That's, yeah. Um, yep really one who is uh particularly you know fond of uh performing or 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 having the spotlight i'm definitely more behind the scenes sure um, nothing wrong with that or podcasts collider you know go do some video podcasts too but even that took me a while to really warm up to a little little gun shy at first but sure comedians are amazing and especially that like humor like art is relative so like to be able to convey a thought that would be like blanket funny 
for a lot of people as opposed to something that's contextually funny. Mm-hmm. It's, it's amazing yeah. to form yeah. a thought like that. And nice. that, uh, yeah, and that gets back to you know we we're just talking about um, your mom's house. There's, I, I, I break down my po- uh, podcast listening to you know thirty percent comedy, twenty percent video games. 25 I'm, my math's going to be off here yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of um f- uh f- film podcasts you know the film vault comedy film nerds yeah some star wars is in there uh and some yeah and some video games so yep i'm pretty much the same lots of comedy what? podcasts got a uh, interview shows as well some D D stuff right yeah yeah same same sort of thing Oh, and then and then for good measure, uh, last podcast on the left, you get a little serial killer news. Oh yeah, <laughs> just in case. You yeah, know, yeah. Research. <laughs> yeah. So I'm wondering with so Lava Bear, right? That's the that's the big one. That was when I first heard about your artwork was Lava Bear because it was everywhere, okay. and I was like, this is amazing. Where did that design come from? Um, that was for that was going to be a diff- a slightly different type of vinyl figure. Um, oh, cool. It's, it's uh, like with um, the drawers, they're called sofubi, which is just, just means soft vinyl in Japan, but it's a different process of making it. Oh, really? Um, smaller, smaller batches and um, um, just a different, different type of, of process. Um, huh. Lava Bear is – so Lava Bear was going to be designed um, as a, a sofubi for, uh, for this one company, and Ben liked it and kind of snatched it up. So it went from being what would have been a smaller run – um, to a um, uh, production uh, piece that uh, we we do we do those in um, uh, in China. So cool. Um, so you make more, and um, yeah, it's just it's just a, a slightly different animal. Um, but yeah, so that was just, that was one design. Ben Ben snatched it up, and it's um, it's got a few design elements in there that are um, that I honestly a lot of them I put in there subconsciously and like I, you know, just, and then I look around the room and go, Oh, there's that <laughs> design there that became the teeth or whatever it is. And I don't want to yeah, of course. Give, any, give you, give any of them away, but, um, Absolutely. you know, it's obviously, you know, it's got like, you know, the classic cartoon feel to it, which is something I've always, I've always liked. Um, uh, whether it's, like I said, Carl Barks or, um, Tex Avery, or Preston Blair, then the later stuff like Frank Kozik. Yeah. And yeah. And, uh, and he was, he had his, his own thing too, but he would use a lot of the public domain stuff in his posters. So it was, I was, you know, around the age of, you know, I, I think it was, uh, you know, 13, 14, 15 when I found his, his stuff. And, um, you know, it was, it, it fit into, you know, a uh, love of music cause he was doing all those rock posters and stuff. And, uh, right. It's just always fun to see these, like you know, bright, brightly silkscreen posters. With I have one here, which is a, um, a Butthole Surfers poster, and uh, <laughs> it's got the Flintstones character in bondage. You know, and he, it's amazing. So that was one. I think Hanna Barbera kind of politely said, "Yeah, maybe don't Fair. don't do that. <laughs> you wouldn't want to pull that with Disney, or right. at least not back then. Now they, they've they've seemed to be kind of." I don't want to say embrace, but they realize one, it's, it, it makes you look bad if you're trying to shut down someone who's really not cutting into your, your property, right. you know, it kind of creates some goodwill or even kind of, it'll get people just, you know, it, it'll, it'll get some other people that wouldn't buy any Disney stuff to kind of, you know, appreciate a form of it, I guess. So. Right, right. Makes sense. Now, tell me if I'm crazy here, okay? So I talked about how you're, you have a specific style, right? And I've recognized it before, and I've seen it before. Did you ever make a cartoon that it was online? It was definitely on YouTube. I know I saw it on YouTube, like, years ago. Yeah. It might have been with the Smosh guys, perhaps? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Weasel. Did you do that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Wow. Because I've been sitting on that for a while now. And I was like, isn't, there's no way they're the same thing. Yeah, that was, um, we, it was just the, wow, uh, it was just the seventh anniversary of the last episode. We did 10 for Smosh and um, Ian and Anthony. And um, 
and Alloy Productions, and we did yeah ten three minute episodes, and they're they're still they're still up there. Um, and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was an experience. That, that was it was it was kind of a crash course in how to with a small team, and I'm talking. Um, I co-created it with um, uh, Eric Filipkowski, who I um, uh, do Two Dumb Dinos with, right. and um, and yeah, it was the two of us. I would he was he wrote it, I designed it, we both created it and just you know both collaborated on it um, together. And um, then we had an animator in New York and really? a producer, and this was a four-person team, you know, cranking out. Wow. They said it was the 30 minutes of animation in a few months. So it was good Lord. a nice little crash course and how to do it. But yeah, I mean, it was one guy taking my designs and, you know, adding to it, tweaking it, doing background, whatever, you know, we, was, we just had to get it done. And, uh, and he, yeah, he, uh, that was a, a lot of work cut out for him to do that quickly. But, um, but yeah, that was, uh, wow. that was, that was a fun one. That feels so good. It's like when you can't remember the name of that song for a while. That's what this was. Because I was like, I know for a fact it might have been. I don't know. I didn't know if that was you, but it looked like your stuff. Did you really? Did you really? Uh, yeah, you no, did. legitimately. I've okay. seen a commercial. I don't remember the name of it, but I remember yeah. seeing Lava Bear, and I was like, I've seen this type of thing before. Oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely uh, have yeah. seen that cartoon. <laughs> Weasel Town. There's, you know. If, Weasel if you, Town. Yeah. That's if you what like, it is. If you like Two Dumb Dinos. Yes. Um, then, then, yeah, I recommend people check that out because uh, we thing. had um, and we had uh, Derek Waters of uh, from uh, the creator of uh, Drunk History do one of the voices. Um, uh, our friend Jason Ritter did the uh, did haunches. So awesome. Uh, the 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 blue dog. That's the thing too. Is um, just disclaimer: there are no weasels in the show. It's about weaseling <laughs> out of things and being a weasel. So it's a cat and a dog. Um, yes. But um, oh, we had Simon uh, Helberg, a, a high school friend of mine, who's uh, you know from uh, the Big Bang Theory. So yeah. he did a couple of voices, and you can you can hear you can hear Eric and I as uh, Doc Worker one and two in episode ten. So oh that was really? Up. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, long time Weasel Town. That's what it was called. Okay, because I remember playlist live. Like I was at the first two, which were like you know the big YouTube cons. Okay, way yeah, way back when. So I remember meeting these YouTubers, and I was, like, in the hole of YouTube. Like, all these big people, and you know, Julian Smith, and, like, Shane Dawson was, like, just starting. And, like, all okay. these things. So I was like, okay, cool, these YouTubers. And uh, you find yourself down different rabbit holes. And I was like, I don't remember how I know what Insane Driver is, but I do. And <laughs> that was one of those things. So, okay, confirmed. Right on. Cool. You made your own cartoon. That's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. I'd um, like to... Uh... Yeah, I'd like to do it again. So, it came if, you're, uh, if you're if you're if you're an animation producer out there, give me a call. Um, yeah, I'll make some calls that, for you. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> that's that's something I would be interested in at some point. Um, doing uh, vinyl toys of of uh, Dipster and Haunches. Ooh, that'd be good. That'd be so. good. So then, when did Two Dumb Dinos show up? Uh, that was we just did our eightieth. Dude, uh, 80th strip. So that started in March of 2018. And yeah, we do one. We do one one a week every um, uh, Saturday at three p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Right um, on. And uh, yeah, so we're we're uh, we're coming up on the you know I guess we're about a year and a half in. But um, dude, that's another yeah. thing. Congrats, that's a big deal. Consistency like that, and like that's a lot of that's a lot of brain work. To have a yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't praise uh, Eric enough because you know people. I, I feel like it's almost the you know the writing and the artwork is almost that. Um, I'd say the writing is sixty percent, the art is is forty. It's the 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 music and picture in yeah. in film that thing that the the music is really sixty percent of it or sound. Sure. Um, so yeah, I mean. Uh, I don't know how he does it every week because they, you know, it's a thing that we like, which is smart, dumb humor. Or yeah. Dumb, <laughs> smart humor. The I best the kind. Former's the better description. But, um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I kind of sit with it more than, than probably, well, 
I, 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 I'm, I'm with the script longer than it took him to write it. I feel because like sometimes it, you know, it'll, uh, he'll have a bunch of new artwork to do. And I feel like, um, I know that's maybe not fair. All I know is when I <laughs> ask him, like, Hey, do you have one? He gets it done pretty quickly, but I will be sitting with it. And then by the time I'm done with it, go, Oh, Oh, I didn't even see that. Connect. Like there, there's, there's, they can be pretty, I mean, definitely clever, but there's, there are a lot of like, uh, interesting, uh, there's so there's a complexity to it. So, uh, my hat's off. I'm complimenting him, and I'm also feeling like I'm, you know, uh, praising my uh, my own uh, <laughs> trip, which is. But uh, I, I, I'm, it's a you know. it's a team effort, you know. You gotta yeah. get yours. It's the, yeah. It's one hand washes the other. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Did you always have that sort of like? So you think like newspaper comics? You know what I mean? You've got like six panels oh, to ten panels. Yeah. Okay. So no, that's the, so the, the the so working for um, Matt Groening for. 13 years i think it was um he did life in hell Uh, he did this before the simpsons it was in la weekly and it was was, uh, this uh, syndicated um weekly comic strip and that's what james brooks saw and got him kind of um got him his foot in the door to do the simpsons in fact he was uh, the story goes that he was driving over to pitch it and he was going to do the pitch life in hell but he thought well if this show isn't if the show is terrible this is my bread and butter this is these are my babies and sure. he, that's when he came up with well i take the, those characters and turn them into a human family because that life in hell was all there was two two humans akbar and jeff but it was mostly rabbits and actually the one-year rabbit was named bongo which is the company that uh he he started that i worked for um but um he would do, he did life and health for, I think, 32 years. And over the last few years um, that he was doing it, when I was at Bongo, I would, um, on Fridays, um, uh, scan the strip and put it up on uh, an FTP site for distributors. Um, and uh, so I was the first person in uh, in the world to get to read uh, Life and Hell every Friday. I couldn't make plans, you know, oh, because... You, yeah. You know, I don't, you know, like I, I told you how long it can take to do a strip. You know, it's if I, it seemed like clockwork if I ever said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go to see this band play at eight o'clock. Inevitably, Matt would get into the office and, you know, um, start later and, you know, I wouldn't be, I'd have to cancel plans. But that was, that was really cool to be, be able to be the first person to, to read it. And uh, there's a, a definite influence on Two Dumb Dinos in that, especially Akbar and Jeff, because that, that was kind of the, the they, they would be in profile facing each other. They sort of had a contentious relationship. They're, they're, uh, uh, they're lovers, but they also, you know, could be real assholes to one another. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, um, that's the thing with, with two dumb dinos is they, especially with scumbag, he is 2d through and through. You'll never see him head on. It just, that's just not the style. Right. So, sure. Some other characters come in; they can be a little, little more three dimensional. But um, in fact, we just started a cameo page. Um, if you just search on on cameo, uh, two dumb dinos, um, and to do it, we um, we had um, a friend of mine, this artist Flat Bonnie, um, make a scumbag puppet. So you can get well wishes, uh, um, advice just any strange request from <laughs> a uh, scumbag uh, puppet. So um, that's check amazing. It's only $5. Come on. Hey, yeah. Why not? That's so funny. What a great Something idea. To be able to pass on to your, your grandchildren. So, yeah, I remember, I think my favorite two dumb dinos, there was one you did. Oh, it would have been a while ago now. It was like uh, the one had a, a dating app. And he was talking about how he uses like a picture of Chris Pratt as his profile oh, picture. Right. It was about him eating. Yeah, he eats delivery yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just stuck with me. It's. So I funny. think we it was Grubhub or something. Or we did. Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It's 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 it is it's weird to. I, Eric's coming up with a new thing. He goes, "Hey, did we do this premise or anything like this?" And I'm like, "I don't remember. I mean, right? I, I've got a folder here. I can go through." 
I can go through all the titles, but honestly, it's like once you do it, you're on to the next thing. You know what I mean? Your brain doesn't. Right. You just got to keep on. All that. And it's going to get harder and harder to remember. So, you know, let me apologize here first if we, uh, you know, cover the same uh, same ground. Oh, that's my that's... memory is absolutely horrible. So I'll tell the same story a bunch and be like the first time. Or, yeah. if, or somebody will tell me the same story more than once and I'll react as if it's the first time I'm hearing it because I don't remember. <laughs> Right. So my well, wife said it was fun I, to watch. I, halfway through some of the, um, so when when I'm, when I'm talking, answering you or, or or saying something, I'm like, did I say this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On another, yeah, another podcast. So I've given uh, up at this point. It's almost a yeah. hundred episodes. Actually, at this point, it'll be over a hundred episodes. Oh wow! And so I'm always like, yeah. I mean, you know, if you've listened, you probably know. <laughs> yeah. 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 They they get it. They get it. But Two Dumb Dinos is awesome. I I I have a yeah. super dry sense of humor as well, so right. I, I just really like that kind of here. It's selective. I really like it. Well, it's it's you know we've always liked I think the same thing with with Dipster from Weasel Town. Yes, those characters who think they're smarter than they are. Yep, they're not malicious. They they're jerks, but they're not completely malicious. Yep, you know a scale from zero to Cartman, they're like a six. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, um, but they're always scheming. They're always, you know, going back to the honeymooners, Ralph Cramden would always have a, you know, a get rich quick scheme yep. that would blow up in his face. Um, and all these characters, you know, yeah, think they're smarter than they are, whether it's, um, Chris Elliott on get a life or Homer Simpson, or like I said, Ralph Cramden, um, we've always, uh, had an affinity for, for those kind of, uh, characters. So, yeah, there's definitely that there's a little bit, there's, there's the, there's the scumbag and then the sensible one uh, in Dingus or, or yeah, hipster is, and the sensible one in, in Haunches. So. This is the best name ever, Dingus. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Not bad at all. So, th- so then when, uh, when were you like, I think I'm going to take a run at this uh, film stuff. You're like, I've made cartoons. I've drawn things. I've made toys. How about I try movies? Um, you mean like in do d- designing or, or cause I'm, yes. Or, um, if, if, yeah, if you know anyone, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you, you tell me that answer is for you. Um, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Whenever, you know, what, anything that, that comes up that seems like it could be, uh, something you can put, put your heart into, you have passion for, um, I'm, I'm up for, in fact, um, this is uh, it looks like I'll, I'll I, I can announce it. It's like not not, not it's not a big deal, but um, it looking uh, looks like I'm doing a um a couple of uh, uh custom um, uh, uh, artwork for a brewing company. So we'll do like a hey. hundred hundred cases or so. Um, don't hold me this to this, but of course, uh, doing uh the the company's card called um Tortugo. Uh, tortoise brewing company and they're, oh, they're sweet. a little south of me and um yeah it looks like we're gonna do a lava beer and Dude. a two dumb dinos beer so that'll be fun what what is your so, life so you say you know eh, movie beer you know what you know yeah, it's all, it's, yeah. It's, all, it's all design you can take it to a movie so it, yeah, it works that's true that's true ideally that's the best kind of movie <laughs> <laughs> To, to go go to the arc light, yeah, 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 that's the way to go. We'll, we'll figure Although they, it out. they have beer there, I don't think you're allowed to bring yeah. it in. <laughs> I do not endorse this. I'm not, you know, I'm that's not right. Insane. And I mean, we can't legally say that there may be ways to sneak one in, but you know, it's uh, well, uh, I mean, I'm yeah. an arc light shill, so I, I have to, uh, to you know, yeah, that's I, true, that's I, true. I can, you 100% are not me, on the other hand, am a degenerate, therefore, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It looks even better because you're like. Oh, I'll get you. A, I'll get you two dumb dinos flask then. Yes. Oh, dude, don't you threaten me with a good time. <laughs> so, what is something that you've learned doing a consistent comic strip like this that you weren't necessarily expecting going into it? Um, I think this is the case with with um, a lot of stuff. I was saying with 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 uh, with tweets too is the ones that you don't think anything of sometimes get a lot more traction than the ones you were kind of excited, really excited about. Yeah. Uh, that's always interesting. Um, so there's that. I, and, and yeah, like I said, with Twitter, 
There was one I, a, 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 a tweet from like a couple, a couple years ago on Star Wars Day, and it was 9 o'clock at night, and I was just thinking, uh, am I oblig- – like, is this an obligatory thing where every year, like, yeah. I, I usually do one, but it's like – and I went, ah, oh, what the hell. And it was such a throwaway one. It was um, uh, Happy 40th Star So, yeah, it was 2017, um, and it was just a picture of the Enterprise. And said happy for <laughs> I thought it was so dumb, but, you know, it was so just like a just a lame like lame joke, and it it went it went viral. I mean, I I can I think I can say that because yeah. it became a Twitter moment. It did. Um, uh, my dad commented on it, and then William Shatner. So they got <laughs> into a thing where he said like, "Welcome to the uh, Enterprise, son." Yeah. And uh, my dad said, "I well, we need to talk." And then William Shatner comes in. And I just in. I think I said, well, this is awkward. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's, see, that's one that I, I wasn't even going to, I possibly wasn't even going to do. And, uh, it just became, you know, this, and some people were so mad. It's, it's, it's <laughs> of course. You know, or just like, so literal, so matter of fact, that's not, that's not the, oh my God. Whatever it might be. and I, there's, <laughs> there's always going to be a response like that. You can, um, yep. think you're being so obvious, like so hyperbolic and, and, so obviously a joke and there's going to, there will there'll most likely be someone who takes it completely literally. So always, um, always, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's the main thing with, with two dumb dinos is just kind of like, um, just what, what kind of gets, you know, um, what, what, what the, um, the ones that people partic- particularly like it, it not being the ones that you thought would be, a hit. Um, but, um, it's important to yeah, keep in mind. It, well, the, the other, the other thing with, with two dumb dinos is really just, it, it'll be Tuesday or Wednesday. And for example, I haven't, uh, you're, 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 you're throwing my schedule off. I should be working now, no, uh, <laughs> but it's always Tuesday or That's Wednesday. What I I do. Go, <laughs> uh, damn you. Yeah. But um, I always, uh, around this time go, Oh crap. I have to, you know, I have freelance, um, like I have a commission or free or whatever it might be. And that get, has to get pushed back, but it's, it's good. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have, uh, a routine and, and be disciplined and have, um, have, have that going. But I, I, I always am trying to, um, um, encourage Eric to just, and it's not an easy thing. I get, it. I tell him like, look, I'm not saying that like, Hey, just, you know, just crank some out. Yeah, but I'm like, hey, I, work. It, like if you get, <laughs> If you get four or five done now, I will just work work on them through the week, and we can go on vacation. There you <laughs> Unless go. Unless topical happens, which you know we 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 don't always do. I, I think that can kind of get old. I think the, it should be it can mostly have it be kind of a timeless thing where we're talking about pogs or whatever it is. Sure. Well, wait, did I say timeless? But <laughs> it's out of out of time maybe. But um um. So that's we actually he got me five scripts now, so I've got some work to do. But there you uh, go, there you go. So what, as somebody who's done so many things in so many different mediums as well, what advice would you have to like artists now that are going to want to do these types of things as well? Um, that's yeah, the I mean ones. just yeah that at the top I mean just and it's not like really that like profound at all profound <laughs> just, just stick to it and um i don't know i think also just make create what you want i i like my, my um my motto is i, I makes what i like i guess that's my motto my 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 calling card whatever you'd want to say but sure keep it simple because i i remember working um at bongo with this this artist who was you know this um this great fine artist. And I remember him getting so bogged down in, Oh, well, this is, you know, um, uh, this is too slim, similar to that, or it's, um, uh, too reminiscent of this or that, whatever it might be. Right. And that's, I'm not saying at all to not be aware of that, but do what you want. If you, if if you feel in your heart that you're, you're, you know, doing something that is, that is natural. I just don't, don't overthink it, make it. And, uh, I mean, don't, of course, don't rip people off. But then again, <laughs> there was, there's an argument that, you know, the, the, the best artists, uh, steal from, 
I forget what the quote was exactly, but um, steal from the best. But yeah, yeah. that I I just I, I think I felt like oh he might this, the, um, the artist he might um, be missing out on doing something because he's too worried and, and someone else you know may not um, you know it's you you could get too much in in your head about stuff. But um, that makes sense. I, yeah, but I mean, of course, I'm not. I'm not saying don't be. I basically gave you a wishy-washy answer, so that <laughs> don't be. How about this? Don't be wishy-washy with there your. There you art. go. That's right. I mean, there's no real answer to that question. It's just, <laughs> I just wonder, because like, especially with artists, because artists is such an like external expression that like you have in you. So I think that's a good idea, and you can get. I can imagine paralyzed by like. Oh well, that's like that, but that's like that. But like, there are very few, if any, original thoughts. They're all predicated on other things and context and experiences and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, you know what? I I I would say this um, either as an addition to what I said or, or to replace that answer. Which <laughs> is give yourself deadlines. That's always good Ooh, because if you, good one. If you don't have it, whether it's self-imposed, well, yeah. Either way, whether it's it's you know, ideally, it's something that you're getting, you know, paid for to, so you can continue to do it. Sure. But, um, I, I always work best with, with deadlines. Um, and it's always, it's, you know, it's usually when it's getting closer to that deadline, you know, to, um, I've, you know, said, um, uh, I've been me- meaning to procrastinate, but I keep on putting it off. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, so, uh, uh, you know, have have deadlines, whether it's self-imposed or um, or by, uh, by you know externally. But um, uh, and that's the th- and 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 you always you gotta you gotta fight the feeling of when there's something you have to do, you want to do anything else because there's that feeling. Like if I'm oh yes doing um, doing a commission for for someone, um, I want to do something that is not pressing. That is just what I want to do so you have to definitely fight that too um so oh yeah i hear you it's like editing <laughs> right. it's like you know you have to edit but or i could just schedule more shows you know right yeah. right well <laughs> when i was also i was talking to you about um uh creating this uh starting a podcast with uh my friend Darina. um yeah. we kind of look at it like oh you know we can ramble and then then edit it. That's always the thing when you, you go on someone else's podcast, you're like, oh, you know, maybe that was, I couldn't find the word there. And, and I'm not saying that, you know. I'm like that uh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, because there's, I've done podcasts with some people where it's just like, oh, no, no, that was, that was good. And some people who will edit out ums and ahs. And so, um, sure. I guess if, uh, you know, I guess if they, if, if that, I think that's a personality thing. I don't even think they're taking out like content because they want to censor anything. It's just a, I want this to run smoothly. It's like an, a kind of a, an OCD thing, which I can relate to. So yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I think that's good advice though. The, the deadline thing, because that'll also prepare you for, if you want to work in the space professionally, if that is for somebody else that like the whole profession is by deadline, you get right. a comic out by this time. It's good training. Yeah, absolutely. Not bad. Not bad at all. And uh, just like that, you know, we've been talking for an hour. Boom, my friend. (laughs) So I got to ask before I forget, uh, where can people find you online? And DesignerCon's coming up. DesignerCon, yes. That's uh, third week of November um, in Anaheim. It's getting bigger every year. Um, I think it's three days now. Right on. Um, I'll be there. Um, it looks at, at this point, I'll, you can find me at, um, I don't know the booth number, but I'll be uh, uh, sharing a booth with, or squatting at uh, a booth, <laughs> a, a Flat Bonnie, who did um, nice. uh, the, the scumbag um, uh, puppet that's on Cameo. Um, yeah, you can um, I find me at uh, Nathan Hamill uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and NathanHamill.com. I think that's all of them. There you go. Uh, there's a Facebook page, which I think is N E Hamill, um, Nathan Elias. Yeah, just N E, not N E. Yeah. E. Um, but I think that's it. Um, and then we, yeah, we have the cameo, which is just search for two dumb dinos, and um, 
Beautiful. Yeah, get it, get get in now while it's only five dollars before we raise our price to you know Gilbert Gottfried levels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, 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 this scumbag's going places, baby. That's right. Um, but if, uh, for ten dollars, you can get scumbag to do a Gilbert Gottfried impression. <laughs> <laughs> You're not legally obligated. I'll get you out of that one. But <laughs> that one, we, that one, we pay you ten dollars. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> That's right. Well, dude, this was really fun. I had a really yeah. good time. Thanks for hanging yeah. out. No, and thanks for um for for being patient because I happened to go back through emails and I'm like, oh my, wow, that was <laughs> it was a year and a half ago where I said, please remind me. Um, I want to come on and do it when uh you know I have uh, a more immediate stuff to pr- promote, and then uh, it was yeah, just this past summer uh, that uh, that we uh, we scheduled this. That's but, right. uh, That's podcasting. Oh, and <laughs> one, one more thing I wanted to uh, to to promote is um, well, two more things actually. I have a a, 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 thread, a threadless shop where you can get T-shirts. Um, Beautiful. I think that's NathanHamill.threadless.com. Um, just uh, Google it. I'm not. I don't have it in front of me. But <laughs> we've got seven shirts now. We're going to do a new one. Um, I I don't know when this comes out, but a, a new shirt at the end of uh, towards the end of October. Um, Kitty Bobo. Who is a cat ghost hobo, <laughs> and he's got a little—he's a ghost. So it's you know works with Halloween. Love it. Uh, and then at this, the time this comes out, um, on um, let me pull up my calendar real quick. But um, the eleventh um, of uh, October, mm-hmm. we'll be um, releasing a um, a print. Um, it's a, a variation on the My Father, My Lord print, which I did. Oh, sweet. By- to go and did it there's a shirt of that on threadless but i'm doing a uh, a color variant that oh, will be cool. up, um in my shop so probably by the time this post it'll be out by then okay right October. on so dude that's so cool right on well this was cool thanks for yeah. hanging out thanks for having me Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows... You can now do that at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, and JC. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>